to know, right? <laughs> Fantastic. Um, my, I have a couple of concerns um, I want to bring to um, your attention. The, um, I, I understand that there's been uh, recently some budget changes, and you know, I, I'm, I want to know that that those are based on merit and not based on you know a couple of folks who happen to know each other and and feel that they are are not making that earned income that they feel is adequate. Um, as you all know, we live in a, a city where there are 30 plus um, staffing, aid, or excuse me, 30 plus title loan companies and, and payday loan facilities, uh, as well as 15 plus uh, staffing agencies that seem to um, dictate where it is the, the you know, livable wage it actually is. Um, you know, $12, $14 an hour, maybe in a, if you have a side business or maybe you're an entrepreneur like myself, you, you might be able to get by. But $14 an hour for some pretty hard labor, especially if it's the mother of your children going to work those hard, hard hours, it's, it's kind of difficult to kind of swallow that pill that, that these staffing agencies and that we're just idly sitting by and allowing these, <coughs> excuse me, allowing these places to dictate you know, what a livable wage is to us. Now, whether that's um, the, 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 the folks who have invested their time and money into their homes and are renting it to, to the city of Twin Falls, uh, you know, the people of Twin Falls and saying, you know, $1,100 is, is fair for this big old house, but, but you know that, that the people here who have experience as electricians and, and folks just coming out of unemployment, um, they, they, just, they just can't compete or they can't make that earned income so they can meet their, their particular debts if you will. Um, from my understanding, you guys can't respond, so if you guys have any concerns or questions to what I'm saying, I don't, I don't know the, the proper rules there, but um, I hope I haven't confused you too much on what I'm saying there. Uh, I just feel like there's, there's an issue there with the, earned, the, the income that people are subjected to um, by the HR departments of the private companies. I know we don't have much control. Uh, but, it, but it comes to my concern where we, I've read that we have on our budget, we have a 1% investment um, forecast, you know, on our return on investment. If, if the city of Twin Falls invests 100000 or excuse me, let's just make it simple, $100 into something, we're only going to get a 1% ROI on that, which, you know, if I turn that into my boss in sales, he would probably, you know, tell me to go look at my numbers again. Maybe I understood or misunderstood what it was that was being said in your budget, um, but I, I believe that, that we can do a lot better than um, giving uh, funds to places like Chobani at $600,000 for a grant where we're not allowing our small businesses an opportunity to flourish by giving them small business grants or opportunities. Um, another thing I'd like to bring up is, is the merits in which the <clears throat> courts operate here in the fifth judicial system. I will caveat that I am not a criminal by any means. Um, I'm not an advocate for anybody but myself, and, um, and I only can speak to myself. Um, I'm gonna read something that, that is, is a case law, I guess you could state, but. So, Mr. Madison, yes, you're sure. too far down the road with the courts, so I yeah. understand that the court system is not under our jurisdiction. You know what, and that. The court operates under the, under the state and county laws, not Thank state you. laws. Thank you, Sean, I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, I, I, I got advice or received advice that it might be uh, my best interest to, to bring it to your attention. Okay. So um, I, I'll still continue on, it'll be very brief, um, but I think everybody should be aware um, that the authority uh, and influence of the law in society, especially uh, uh, when used as a, uh, a constraint on an individual, an, institution, an institutional behavior, the principle of all members of the society, including those in government, are considered equal, subject to public disclosure of legal codes and processes. So I would say to everybody in this room, uh, before you do anything for yourself in the court of law, just prepare to educate yourself because you will not get any help from the clerks or um, anybody within that system. Um, man, if you guys can't help with the, with the courts and, and the prosecutioners of this of this city, I mean, I'd just be wasting time. Um, I, I'm sorry that I haven't kept track of the time and how much time I've spoken, but do I have at least uh, a couple minutes to bring to, to your attention some, some things, some logical fallacies? So if you could very briefly. Thank you, Sean, I appreciate if you, it. And if you have more um, detailed information that you need, you know, we'd be happy to speak to you 
offline, set up a meeting to understand your concerns and see if there are ways to address that. Thank you. Uh, because again, from the from the dais tonight, we're probably not going to be able to address your concerns simply here. Then. But it affects everybody. I have to say. I mean, we're going to go through this life dealing with the courts. So, you know, you could keep it absolutely shocked. I am so sorry. You bet. It will be. Um, so. Uh, the courts do seem to operate on their own. Um, clerks will um, will withhold the information necessary to make an informed plea on, on the behalf of yourself um, um, through your right to which you can have uh, counsel. Um, however, counsel is through a public defender, which a public defender is, is a bar card that states the state of Idaho, right? So it seems like there's a contradiction there where um, somebody representing the state of Idaho is also uh, in a defensive state is also in a prosecution state um, representing the state of Idaho. Um, if I submit a file to, to the judge with, with my intentions and the judge receives a blank document, it, it, it appears to me that there might be some funny business going on. Uh, additionally, when judges make um, rulings within a court for a defendant's uh, attorney, I feel like there, there's a little bit of a line being crossed, uh, especially when we have a United States um, code that, that specifically speaks to the, to the processes and procedures. And I'll, I'll state that's Title 28, um, uh, Chapter 131, Section 2071 through 2073. Um, I, I feel like there needs to be um, a little bit more uh, investigatory work within our, our judicial system um, for it to be a fair and meaningful hearing for everybody here in the future. I appreciate you guys' time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for her. And for her, you know, you guys gave her a day on September 13th. Amazing woman. I want to help this community as best as I can, but I don't think that incarcerating people for behavioral issues is, is really something that, that is, um, is needed. I think we should focus more on, on getting psychiatric help for those instead of incarcerating them and putting them through a system that's perpetual. Thank you.